while it's loading, I'll show you how to do it. So it's going to take you to this page. You'll enter a project name or a sample name. Here you can upload, this is for points, you would upload your coordinates. So you can just drag from your computer and drop it into that box. Okay, and it'll know what your coordinates are. And those are the coordinates that it's going to use to extract the data. And it'll show you where, how, where those coordinates are here. You want a certain data range, date range, you enter that here. Okay, and or you can use the map to select your coordinates. So let's take a look. So this is uh, previous projects that I've done. It saves them on my page. So I previously requested Rwanda land cover. So it's ready and I can go to that and, and re-download it if I need it. It saves it on my page. I'm not sure how long it will save. <coughs> Expires on October 12th, so it saves it for a month. But let's start a new request. So this is an area sample. So I can select an area myself. If I have a polygon file already made, maybe I know the boundaries of my study site, I already have it in a file, I can take that file and drag it here and it will, it will know what it is and it will use that to extract my data. Okay, or I can do what I was doing on the other side, I can just draw it. Again, you have to click on the first point so it knows you're done. It's going to zoom in. I missed a little bit, but it's okay, we're just demonstrating, right? So it's going to extract the data for this area. Again, let's see if I can get from this year at least, starting in May. And now of course the most important part, what do we want? So what is the data we want? So this, in this case you kind of have to know what you're looking for. So if I try to type MODIS, Combined modus land cover type. Okay, this is 500 meter resolution yearly 2001 to 2016. So it's not going to have my date. Right, I put it to May. So it won't have my recent data. But maybe if I do NDVI the same vegetation index, there it is, okay, this vegetation index, this has 2000 to present, so I can click this, again, there's that same 500 meter 16 day vegetation index, there's also different reflectance, there's the NDVI, this is the normalized difference vegetation index, it's pretty common in a lot of uh, in a lot of literature scientific studies showing that the change in vegetation extent or greenness usually seasonally but they also use it to show deforestation as well so there's a lot of different variables if you're interested in what a variable is you just click this information here it'll tell you a little bit more about it and I believe you can figure out a lot more data, a lot more information. Well, I think you'd have to look up if you wanted to know what this is, MIR reflectance. I thought there was a way to go to that page so it showed you more information. Um, I thought it was here, but Apparently not. So y you have to know what this is, obviously, right? Um, you have to know what you're looking for. 
So in this case, it's giving us a lot of different vegetation indices. But it has it, the same 16 day, And then we can, so all the layers that you want, you put them here. Let's see if we can get the modus from 2016. So there it is. Land cover one, land cover two, land cover three, land cover type. Okay, again, each one of these is a different variable and you're gonna have to know which one you want. That's gonna be specific for your, your question that you have. We don't have time to go over all of them because there's a lot. But you guys are gonna have to kind of research this and, and figure out which product is best for you. But we can try land cover prop one here we choose our format. Usually raster formats are in Geo, GeoTIFF. That's the most common one, so it's got, it's got it there for you. Okay, most of the time you're gonna see raster and GeoTIFF, or TIF extension. So we'll keep that, and then the projection, right? We know that the projection is important. So it wants us to choose. And it's telling us, be aware, any reprojection, reprojection of data from its source projection will inherently change the data from its original format, right? Anytime we're changing projections, we're changing some aspect of the geometry. It's impossible to, to keep one, both, all parts of the geometry while also changing the coordinate reference system. So it's giving us that warning. Okay, we know that, but it's just letting us know. So, the native projection, I wouldn't recommend that because it's a very complicated and, and not very well-known projection, but you can do that. I would maybe recommend a geographic because that's what your, probably your data points are gonna be in. You know, you'll have your coordinates and geographic reference systems, so you can put it all together to start and then you can transform both of them to a different projection system when you want to do your analysis. So here we'll do geographic. <laughs> here we'll do geographic. So I'm, I'm asking for modus. I'm asking for the vegetation index for this area. Submit. It says it's missing something. I need to give it a name. So, this is just so I know when I come back which request it is. Still missing something. What am I missing? Ah, end date. Okay, so it's going to give me everything within this date. So, actually, for the vegetation index, I probably don't want to request it at the same time as the land cover because if I'm requesting vegetation indices every 16 days going back from to 2016, it's going to take a really long time for them to get all that data together and send it to me. Okay, so I should probably, maybe if I just want land cover, I'll take off the vegetation index and I'll put in today's date and I'll just ask for the land cover for 2016. The area sample request was successfully submitted and an email notification will be sent to you when your data is ready. Okay, done. So it's gonna deliver me the data that it has based on the request that I made. You don't have to do any cutting, slicing, extracting, okay? Providing that you put in the correct coordinates here, which clearly I did not. <laughs> you know, I didn't do a very good job of showing our zone here. But once you get this, if it has your points, you can then 
go into QGIS and do your own manipulation and you have a small data set to work with so it's not going to overwhelm your computer. Right. We'll see today we're going to work with some a big global data set and you're going to see that it might not work very, very good on your computer. We're going to try to cut it down to size so that we can actually work with the data and our computer isn't constantly trying to load this really big data set. So that's the advantage of having this appears website. Okay, it'll cut down the data for you and it'll tell you when it's ready and you download it. The work that you guys are gonna have to do is figure out which of these data sets you need. Okay, and you're gonna have to go into the literature, you're gonna have to go into the user manuals, and you're gonna have to figure out which variable you're really interested in. Because it's gonna be different for everybody. Okay, so that's pretty easy, right? I mean, that's a, that, I think this is a really nice delivery system. You still have to download the data, so you're still going to need in, good internet to download the data. But if you have it, then you can get the data. So that's the appears, and you can do the same thing for points. Right, you can put your points here, and you can use this button and go to the map and click points and it'll add your coordinates up here and it'll get your data for each one of those points. It'll give you a variable for each one of the points that you enter here. Okay. That might be the easiest way to start testing this website. Go in, find your hometown, put a little circle around it or put a little dot there, make a request, and see what it gives you. Okay, if it's a small data set, it should be pretty quick. It should be pretty small to download. You can kind of explore it in QGIS and see what it is. And then you can kind of learn how it works. And you can start making a little bit more focused and, and uh, accurate requests. So this is kind of what we just did with the polygon. Put in all your information, and it'll give it to you. So the next one is the Oak Ridge. The Oak Ridge is going to be all level three and level four products. It's going to be all products that have already been processed, and it's an actual specific, very specific value that it's given you. So let's take a look. <laughs> okay, this is the Oak Ridge National Laboratory Data Center. And here it's going to give you a kind of a nice overview of what they have. Biomass, carbon cycle, fire, climate, soils, land use, and human dimensions. You can go to all data sets, see what they have. See if there's a specific data set that you might be interested in. You don't have to do these calculations because somebody's already done it. That's a great way to skip a, a lot of time and frustration on the computer is to see if there isn't another person, another scientist that has already done this index for you. Then you can use it. So while this is loading, I'll show you some of the data that's available here. AFRISAR has a, a bunch of um, biomass data set, mostly for Gabon. Okay, so this is LIDAR data. Very specific. We're going to do LIDAR data next week. They have this if you're interested in Gabon. 
They have it for the entire country, I think. Okay, so this is a really cool way of showing forest structure. Height profiles of the forest, canopy cover. This data is already, it's done. You don't have to do it, you just download it, and it's, it's there, okay? This is emissions monitoring, but it's actually, that has a lot of land cover variables, so like vegetation maps, carbon, the amount of carbon in the vegetation, um, freshwater wetlands, tree cover, digital elevation models, Okay, this is, here's one of your elevation models that we were asking about. And it's global. It's one kilometer, which is not great. The resolution is one kilometer. So you have one elevation for one kilometer of space. That's not great, but if you're looking at a really big area, it can help you see mountains and valleys. Another one on here is the Jedi. This is really cool. This isn't available yet, but it's going to be very soon. It's global LiDAR data. So they have LiDAR, which again we're going to go over next week. LiDAR is using lasers to get canopy forest metrics and elevation. And this is going to be across the entire globe. So you'll be able to get forest cover data anywhere in the world the height of the forest and the coverage of the forest. The resolution is not going to be great because it's, uh, it's on the space station. So here they're showing you the different ways that LiDAR is collected. You can use terrestrial LiDAR. This is people on the ground in the forest with lasers. You can use drones. You can use planes. Or in this case you have the space station. So you get a kind of a bigger pulse, a, a smaller, lower resolution, 25 meters. Still isn't bad. 25 meter resolution is not bad, okay, especially for, because it's global. So keep an eye on this if you're interested in forest structure, because they should be releasing this data soon. Soils, if you're interested in soils. They have a lot of nice global data sets here. Uh, they have soil CO2 flux. This is only for Costa Rica. Global database of soil respiration. Um, a lot of different global gridded soil phosphorus distribution. So if you wanted to know how much phosphorus you may have in your soils, you can find that here. Phosphorus, of course, is really important for productivity. So that might be, or it's also important for eutrophication of, of wetlands, pollution, wetland pollution. So that might be interesting to you for the research question that you have. So there's really a lot of varied, really nice data sets that are out there that you guys have access to. Again, all of this is free. Vegetation collection on the same website. Global distribution of fine root biomass in terrestrial ecosystems. If you're interested in below ground root biomass in your site, this data set will give you an estimate. Do we know if that estimate is really accurate? Maybe not. But if it's the best that you have, and it's the only thing you have, then it might help you. It might help you design your study. It might help you answer some questions about your, your research. Global distribution of root nutrient concentrations. Global one degree map of forest area, carbon stocks, and biomass from 1950 to 2010. Okay, so they have some really nice already processed data sets in here. And you, that's going to save you maybe a lot of time doing something similar. So let's see if that site loaded. We can look at some of this stuff. So yeah, so here's all the data. Okay, and we can go through all of this if we want. Projects, soils, vegetation.
Here's the specific projects that I was showing you. So here's uh, Afrasar in Gabon. Gabonese Space Agency and the European Space Agency. I didn't know Gabon had a space agency, but <laughs> they do, and their data is available on this website. There's another one from Africa here. Here's Jedi. Safari. Southern African Regional Science Initiative. Linkages between land and atmospheric processes. So you're going to get maybe vegetation processes. Global greenhouse gas emissions and uptake, carbon uptake from the vegetation for southern Africa. <laughs>